Welcome back to Madman Review. So, you know when we talk about big bore guns? Yeah, it's all about that wide, scary business end. But hey, if you're anything like me, you're not just satisfied with size. You want your big guns to have an extra zing, like a dash of habanero sauce to really spice things up. We're talking about a blend of heavy lead with a solid hit of gunpowder to turn range time into a thrilling adventure. The problem is, there aren't a whole lot of semi-automatics out there that can handle true magnum ballistics. So in this video, we're going to talk about the top 5 big bore magnum semi-autos that really bring the heat. Quick disclaimer, no 460 rolling handguns are on this list. Those are typically chambered in 45 ACP, but have stronger magazine springs, a stronger recoil spring, and a custom barrel chambered in 460 rolling, a beefed up Magnum level 45 caliber Wildcat. While the cartridge is capable of true 44 Magnum ballistics, the guns aren't built from the ground up, so they don't count. Number 5. Auto Mag Taking the number 5 spot, we've got the legendary Auto Mag. This beast made its grand entrance back in 1971 and quickly earned its title as the first real semi-automatic Magnum. Picture the AR-15's mechanics. That's basically how the Auto Mag worked. With its short recoil operation and a rotating bolt system. The firepower? It came from the 44 Auto Mag pistol cartridge, a modified version of the beloved 44 Remington Magnum, only with a longer case and a rimless design for better feeding in a semi auto. Now, if you're a fan of Clint Eastwood's Dirty Harry series, your ears might perk up here. The Auto Mag had its moment of Hollywood fame in Sudden Impact, the fourth movie in that series. It was a fitting choice for Dirty Harry, showcasing the gun's power and style. But why isn't this gun a household name? It's a story of business woes and market miscalculations. The Auto Mag's debut was promising, but the company behind it hit the skids financially. They began selling the pistol at a loss, hoping to spark market interest. But as it turned out, a large semi-auto Magnum pistol was more of a collector's item than a mainstream hit. Despite the initial buzz, the market wasn't as hungry for this novelty as expected. The company's journey was rocky and short-lived. They started shipping the first auto mags in August 1971, but by May 1972, just nine months later, they were filing for bankruptcy, having produced only around 3,000 pistols. Over the next decade, the company was resurrected and renamed multiple times, managing to produce about 9,000 pistols in total. However, the auto mag eventually faded into obscurity. Fast forward to present, and there's a plot twist. The auto mag brand was resurrected in 2015, breathing new life into this classic. The new models have hit the market, albeit with some production struggles and part supply issues. It's a bit of a roller coaster in terms of availability and production consistency, leaving the future of this iconic pistol somewhat uncertain. As for cost, the new auto mags start at a hefty $3,500. If you've got the cash and a love for firearm history, it's a tempting offer. For those who prefer the classic touch, the original auto mags are out there in the wild, waiting for the right collector to snatch them up. Number 4. AMT Auto Mag 4 and 5 At number 4, we've got the AMT Auto Mag 4 and 5. So, AMT, short for Arcadia Machine and Tool, popped up in 1977 and was one of the names behind the original Auto Mag. Fast forward to 1987, and they're whipping up a sort of sequel to the Auto Mag. This new kit on the block had a vibe similar to a 911-style pistol, but with a blowback operation, not like the 1911's tilting barrel action. And guess what? They started out firing 22 Magnum cartridges. Yeah, but hold up. They eventually decided to go bigger. 
Things got a shakeup in 1992 with the Auto Mag 3. We're talking a comeback to the classic tilting barrel action. Fun fact, Harry Sanford, the brain behind the original Auto Mag, was also the mastermind here. The Auto Mag 3 initially rolled out for 9mm Winchester Magnum, but it really made a name for itself with the 30 carbine cartridge. Yeah, we're still not in the big leagues of big bores, but just wait for it. Also in 92, AMT dropped the Auto Mag 4, and this baby was a whole different ballgame, firing the hefty 45 Winchester Magnum. Now we're talking big bore. The following year, they brought out something even wilder, the rare and almost mythical 9mm Magnum. This was its debut. But back then, you had to DIY your ammo because factory stuff wasn't around. Not the best move for popularity, right? While the 10mm Magnum was more of a shooting star, the 45 Winchester Magnum Auto Mag 4 hung around until AMT called it quits in 2001. In 93, the same year they introduced the 10mm Magnum, AMT also rolled out the Auto Mag 5, chambered in 50 Action Express. This gave the Desert Eagles from Magnum Research a run for their money. But alas, the Auto Mag 5 was a short-lived dream. Wrapping up in 1995, it just couldn't snag the same fan base as the Desert Eagle in the same caliber. When AMT closed shop, Standard Manufacturing took over, but only revived the Auto Mag 2. The Auto Mag 4 and 5? They left the stage as true power players in the semi-auto world, leaving behind a legacy of what could have been in the world of big bore semis. Number 3. Wildy Coming in at number 3, we've got the Wildy, a real monster of a pistol that first hit the scene in 1973. Hot on the heels of the original Auto Mag, this bad boy was built to withstand pressures up to 48,000 PSI, ready for what its creator, Wildy Moore, had in mind. Super powerful cartridges for silhouette shooting and hunting. You could get the Wildy in a bunch of calibers like 9mm Winchester Magnum, 44 Auto Magnum, 44 Winchester Magnum, and a slew of Wildy's own creations. 357 Wildy Magnum, 41 Wildy Magnum, 44 Wildy Magnum, 45 Wildy Magnum. And the beast of them all, the 475 Wildy Magnum. This last one, which debuted in 1977, got famous thanks to Charles Bronson's character in Death Wish 3. When he talked about it as a mini version of an African hunting cartridge, well, that was a stretch. It actually comes from the 284 Winchester, but don't let its humble origins fool you. This cartridge is a powerhouse, slinging bullets from 230 grains at 1,941 feet per second to 350 grains at 1,396 feet per second. The Wildy used a three-lug rotating bolt in a fixed barrel. Available in both double and single action, it rocked a patented short-stroke gas operation, a break from the previous gun's short recoil operation. And here's a cool feature. It had a manually adjustable gas regulator. That meant shooters could fine-tune it for different loads. <laughs> Pretty sick, right? The road wasn't always smooth for the Wildy. Between legal battles and the original creator's health issues, production hit the brakes in 2011. But, like a phoenix, the Wildy rose again in 2016 thanks to USA Firearms Corporation. If you've got somewhere between $2,750 and $2,950 burning a hole in your pocket, you can snag one of these legends. Just like Paul Kersey in Death Wish 3, you can make a statement that resonates with power and history. Number 2. Lar Grizzly Sliding into the number 2 spot is the Lar Grizzly, which, which just between us, 
is my absolute favorite on this list. I've got my fingers crossed to snag one for myself someday. Designed by Perry Arnett and brought to life by Lar Manufacturing, the Grizzly is basically a super-sized 1911. The prototype? They literally pieced together two 1911s to handle its beefy cartridge. The 45 Winchester Magnum. I mean, what else would you load into a 1911 that's got the muscle of Andre the Giant? The Grizzly first flexed its muscles in 1983 with the Mark I and Mark II models. The Mark I sported a sleek blue finish, while the Mark II went for a more rugged, parkerized look and a friendlier price tag. Now, there's some mystery around a Mark III. I couldn't dig up anything, so if you've got the scoop, drop it in the comments. We're all ears. The Mark I and II weren't just about brute strength. They came with a conversion kit for those who wanted to switch things up from the 45 Win Mag. These kits included everything from a new barrel to the ejector and extractor, covering calibers like 45 ACP, 357 Magnum, and 10 mm Auto. Lar didn't stop there. They introduced the Mark IV, chambered in the 44 Remington Magnum, and the Mark V for those who wanted to go big with the 50 Action Express. So. What put the brakes on the Grizzly's fun? Unlike the original Automag's business blunders or AMT Automag's bankruptcy woes, the Grizzly's challenge was all about legal headaches. Around 1998 and 1999, gun manufacturers were facing a storm of lawsuits. Even though Lar wasn't in the crosshairs, the fear of being targeted was real. They hit pause on production, worried about some lawyer out there eyeing them for a lawsuit. When they tried to get back to business, their insurance cost had tripled. Ouch, right? Facing such steep costs, Lar decided it wasn't worth the risk and bowed out. But hey, they made about 15,000 of these beauties, and they pop up for sale pretty often. If you think the Grizzlies as badass as I do, keep an eye on Gunbroker. Who knows, you might just score one for yourself. Number 1. Magnum Research Desert Eagle Topping our list at the number 1 is the Magnum Research Desert Eagle. Now just a heads up, of the previous 4 pistols we've talked about, 2 aren't being made anymore, and the 2 that came back are like finding a needle in a haystack. And cost a small fortune. But the Desert Eagle... It's been in continuous production and is still going strong. The brains behind this beast are Bernard C. White and Arnold Sturm. Their journey started with a patent for a gas-operated pistol in January 1983. After a few tweaks by Israel Military Industries, now Israel Weapon Industries, they landed their second patent in 1985. The Desert Eagle first rolled out in 357 Magnum and 44 Magnum. And for a bit, they added 41 Magnum to the mix. But the real showstopper was the 50 Action Express, which they started chambering in the late 80s to early 90s. A mass-produced 50 caliber Magnum handgun? Yeah, that turned heads everywhere. This big board didn't just capture attention, it inspired dreams. The 50 Action Express had its quirks, sure, but it was a fascinating and powerful round. The Desert Eagle didn't stop there, though. They toyed with the 357 44 Bain and Davis, a 44 Magnum neck down to a 357, but that never went beyond a prototype. They also had a run with the 440 Carbon, but that and a 41 Magnum got the axe. That left us with 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum, and the 50 Action Express. That is, until late 2018. That's when Magnum Research rolled out the improved 440 Corbon, rebranded as the 429 DE. It's still pretty new, so fingers crossed it sticks around. Now, there's some back and forth about the Desert Eagle's reliability, but no one's arguing about its accuracy. And let's talk looks. Its unique style, mammoth size, and that 50 caliber option... 
They've made the Desert Eagle a star in over 500 movies and TV shows. It's not just a handgun. It's a pop culture icon. That kind of fame keeps the sales ticking and the production lines running. And that wraps up this video. Any other big bore gun videos you want us to make? Comment below. Please consider leaving a like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Click that little bell icon too for more of these videos. Thanks for watching and stay safe out there.